So now we will go, do we have a Daniela Larson here? Okay, fantastic. See, I don't even know her, but I'll turn the time over to her now. Thank you. See me at all? I know we had some people stand up that were here from organizations. Um, how many of you are here because you want to know how to be involved in Utah's response to the refugee crisis? You raise your hand if you're here for that kind of perfect, you're who I want to talk to, and the other organizations as well. Uh, because, like you said, running a nonprofit is sometimes it's, it's very isolating. Sometimes in the nonprofit world, there's this sense of competition for resources and they don't talk to each other or work together very much. But most of the nonprofits that are here that I'm aware of are the kind that love to collaborate. A lot of times we work in silos and we have different pieces of the solutions. And this is a great opportunity to find out who's got what, what we can refer people that need services to, and how we can all work together. Because I think in the end, we all have the same goal. And that is that refugees that come to Utah have dignity, have self-respect, are self-reliant, and acclimate to the culture that is here without losing their culture. There's, there's a lot that happens in, in that line. Um, I will give you the 30-second version of my 15-year story when it comes to working with refugees and economic development. Most of the work that I've done has been in economic development in, in other countries. As opposed to trying to bring people here, really one of the, the most impactful things that can be done in the world is long-term economic sustainability in the countries that they're already in. If the government is stable, if the economy is stable, we usually don't end up with a refugee crisis in that country. So helping to, to educate and to provide opportunities for employment in those countries, those are uh, some of the big things that, that we do. I'm, I, I was browsing at some of the different organizations in the back. I'm familiar with a few, but not with some. Um, and I hope I get a chance to, to meet everybody that's here to find out about what they're doing and how we can collaborate and, and um, exchange resources on some of the things that we're trying to do. The first refu refugee that we were in involved with was um, we uh, helped bring a young woman from Afghanistan over to the US back in about 2005. She had lost her leg in a Taliban attack. Her father had been helping the military know where the, the Taliban were hiding, and they threw a grenade at her and her father while they were walking down the street. It killed him, and, and it blew off their leg, her leg. Um, she met some members of the military and they helped bring her over in, in 2005 and get her a new prosthetic leg. And we went to the airport to meet her and she stayed with us. I have five children. What a, we, we had a Muslim with us for Christmas that year. What an eye-opening and fun experience. She had never heard of Christ before. My children had never heard of the Quran before. And we sat around the Christmas tree and learned a lot about each other. And the biggest thing that we learned is how much that we had in common. I, it is such a gift to bring the, the experience of these different cultures. Um, I, I admire all of these organizations that do great work with uh, the UN and, and going to Congress, and that's definitely needed. Um, I, I often stand up after I, I speak after people with these really long titles and, and awesome things to do. And you know, my first title is I, I was a high school dropout. We, we don't have to wait until we're way up here to do something. It's about going and do something today. Now, I went to UV later and you know, I, I got my education, but a lot of times we feel that because of where we are or because we're too small, we're not big enough to make a difference. I, um, Razia, the refugee, um, ended up going back to Afghanistan. She had come over here just on a special medical leave visa, and Senator Hatch's office helped to bring her over here and secure all of that. A lot of organizations got involved, donating a leg, physical therapy, all of these other things. Afghanistan wasn't as destabilized at the time. She went back. We put her through school there the, the, uh, in, in Kabul. Um, but we had, you know, a single woman walking the streets of Kabul to go to school every day. She graduated. She was doing work for um, organizations with women's rights. And about a year and a half ago, she started getting her own personal death threat letters from the Taliban. We, we have one up at our, at 
at our house. She's we're we're actually really proud of that. If you've done enough to tick them off, then you know you've done something right. <laughs> she um, so we we ended up even though our policy is usually to help people become economically established in their own country, her situation was different. And so we uh, we brought her back here, and she's actually been living with us for about a year now. And she has also gone through our program. She is an asylum seeker, so that means she's not received refugee status yet, but she is waiting for that. She's here seeking asylum. And that is kind of a limbo that a lot of people fall into. Nevonis Institute, the school that I run, is a post-secondary private school, and we do work with um, we work with the Department of Workforce Services. We're an authorized training center for them, and so they have funding. Every refugee, please, organizations that work with refugees, um, listen up. This is somewhere where we would love to help you. We can receive funding for them to go through short-term market skills training to help get them back to work quickly. And that, that is our goal. And our biggest challenge is the resettlement agencies, the, um, all the organizations that work with them, we, you know, a lot of times they work with health, they work with finding housing, they work with, you know, these other things. If you have somebody that you think is a good candidate for some short-term market skills training, you know, pass them off to us. We can, we can help with that part of that resettlement. Because as you heard Tito say, so many of these refugees, they, they are they're absolutely, they're grateful for the, the housing, the food, all of those things. So the biggest thing that they want is the self-respect that comes with being self-reliant. They come to us usually already with so many skills of their own. They're, many are very well educated, many already speak English. Oftentimes their degrees are not recognized here. Many of them are great artisans. They, they come with amazing talents. Um, I, I want to show you a quick video of a couple of the students that we work with, we'll see Razia in here as well. She couldn't be with us today. She wasn't feeling well this morning. I've been working for Nevada's Institute as a teacher. I am teaching digital marketing to a few students in Madagascar. This is an opportunity that was never been available before. Having an internet access and a computer and you can literally learn everything and anything you want. Uh, we've been teaching these uh, students in Madagascar for four months now and uh, now they're starting their real-world project that they actually get paid using the experiences that they've learned. It is a blessing that the church is allowing these students to have access to the church internet in case they don't have their own at home. Hi, my name is Razia. Uh, I'm from Afghanistan. Um, when I was a child, uh, during a Taliban attack, my father was killed and I lost my leg uh, because of my working with foreign people and um, U.S. military and women tribes. I got a threat letter from Taliban. So uh, since then, uh, I was being attached with my uh, U.S. military friends and they helped me uh, come to United States. So I'm a refugee here um, and currently um, I'm attending uh, Infusion Soft class at Navanis Institute. I, I found it really interesting and useful. So I'm really looking forward to teach it to other refugees in their own languages. My name is Tito Mohamed. Born in Nigeria, raised up in the Middle East. I converted to LDS and I was jailed for that in Egypt. Where I spent 15 years in prison. I started my studies with Nirvana's Institute, where I am studying digital media. My work is to help the refugees get into this course so that they can get a job. This is going to help me greatly in getting an audience to the international community, interacting with people who can learn about my business online even without the need of me meeting them. And most of the students who finish high school and cannot really afford to go to the university or to the college, I can have the time to introduce them to Nirvanas and they can learn online from Asai Mara. They can care on Facebook, care on Twitter, communicate with people. I'm, I'm going to pause it there and just tell you the rest of Moses' story. Moses was just here for um, a few weeks, just a little while ago. 
He um, is a Maasai warrior, as you can tell by the way he's dressed from, um, from Kenya. And he runs a safari company. He had no way of advertising that and helping that to grow while he, you know, from being there. But, you know, in places that we work like Nepal and Madagascar and um, we're, we're starting projects in, in Ghana, even in Afghanistan, people have the internet. The opportunity that we have to help people learn English, uh, learn computer skills, learn things that they can do from their own country, help them set up the marketing for their own business from anywhere in the world, like to hear you said at the beginning, this is an opportunity that has never existed before. So we work with refugees here, uh, going back to what the, the work is in Utah, doing the exact same thing. We get them current market skills training, we help them get the financial aid, we help them find those different resources. One of the, the things that Rafi was told, for example, when she first got here is that she couldn't get a driver's license. Now for a girl from Afghanistan, Getting a driver's license was like the ultimate ticket to freedom. She wanted a driver's license so badly. But she, until her um, refugee status actually goes through, she can't get a social security number. But there is a way for refugees to get a driver's license without a social security number. They just have to apply for one. And after they get a letter saying that they're not eligible, they can take that to the DMV and they will give them a social security number. Knowing these little things like this, because you have been through the process, these refugees like Razi and Tito, they have so much to offer each other. And so helping them to help each other is, is, is one of our goals as well. Um, on our website, if you just go to nevanis.com forward slash refugee, there is this refugee services questionnaire. I'd love for everybody here to go and fill this out. It's going to ask if you're with an organization if, or if you are looking to help a refugee. What kind of skills, talents do you bring to the table? Do you even have an hour a day that you can mentor a refugee in speaking English online? Do you have some a couple of hours a week that you can teach a refugee how to drive? It's kind of scary. You have to be really brave. <laughs> Razia has a prosthetic leg and I have a stick. That didn't go well. <laughs> Um, but there's, there is something that everybody can do, and we, we offer internships, both students from UVU and BYU. Some of those are paid internships as well. If, so if you're interested in participating in, in anything that we do, whether you're an organization that serves refugees, please let us know what you're doing. Um, we have access to a lot of funds through the state for refugees that a lot of people just are not aware of that they exist. Or if you're somebody that wants to help your refugees, Please um, fill this out and, and let us know. I promised Alex Boye that I would tell him that he that tell everybody here that he is not a flake for not being here. That was completely my fault. Um, when we finalized the dates to this event, he was in London at the time and didn't get the message. And so he asked me to. Um, I am just going to play for you his song that is one of my favorites. It's not David or Shalai. Okay. So since he's supposed to go after me, I'll just close with this.
Yeah. <laughs> Tito, your website has been filtered. What did you put on there? <laughs> um, if you go to titomomen.com, that you can see the website that Tito built when he went through our course. He, you can schedule him to come and speak. He gives awesome firesides. You can buy his book. And I promise it's all clean. It's totally legit. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please fill out that form. I'm so excited to see so many people that are so uh, eager to make a difference in the world. Thank you.